Fernando ready in the strike two pitch is hit back to the box dribbling to second Samuel on the bag throws to first double play Fernando Valenzuela has pitched a no hitter. I love and that old that video. Was, I know it's great. That was the day Fernando Valenzuela threw a no hitter against the St. Louis Cardinals. The year was 1990, his final year with the Dodgers. For nine innings, Valenzuela threw 119 pitches and had seven strikeouts. The final score was 6 0. He remembered that historic moment this way quote, I think everything came together with the team. My teammates were up to the task, and finally it was achieved. It's a nice memory. <laughs> and for more on the life and legacy of Fernando, sports journalist Ed Guzman from the LA Times is joining us now. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, I, I know it's for a sad reason because he had so much success that not only impacted the Dodgers but also the Latino fan base in Los Angeles. Can you talk a little bit about that? I, I was reading this morning some people comparing his impact on that community with how Shohei is impacting the Japanese community. Yeah, I think there's a tremendous legacy with the Dodgers organization, Sandy Koufax and, and the Jewish community and how much that community, you know, how much it means to them. And with Fernando, I mean, I think uh, I can I can personally attest to that as the son of Mexican immigrants myself. I mean, I, I think a lot about how much uh, Fernando meant to our community and, and certainly my family. Um, we always talk about 1981 fondly. My mother took me to the parade in 1981. So, yeah, this is a, a loss that was deeply felt last night, unquestionably. Yeah, and he, he captivated baseball with the Fernando mania we keep talking about. <laughs> what made his style of pitching so unique, and how did it change the way fans viewed his position as starting pitcher? I think it was just, it just felt so unorthodox and so out of nowhere, um, as, as I wrote in the obituary that we posted uh, on LATimes.com. I mean, it's, it, it's like he would look up as if almost seeking help from a higher power and... Um, and also just the way he burst onto the scene. It was so, I mean, if it was a movie script, you wouldn't believe it <laughs> or you wouldn't, you wouldn't accept, you wouldn't green light the project. And, um, you know, you just kind of marveled at how he was able to do this at the very highest level of baseball. And, um, and not only that in that particular season in 1981, but just that he kept it going for several years after that and was a top line pitcher for the Dodgers. Yeah, I think back, we, we keep showing videos and clips, right, of some of those defining moments. It's so fun to look back. That was such a special time in baseball. Can you talk about some of the defining moments for you as someone who has uh, covered this for, for a number of years and, and how you think they'll contribute to his lasting legacy? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's one of those things where, you know, obviously the body of work is what, what we remember him by. But I, I think what was so amazing was how enduring the connection was. Um, you know, being part of the Spanish language broadcast team as he was since 2003, I, I think allowed for him to still be present, still be in, in people's living rooms. Again, I, I mentioned my parents. I mean, they listened to every game on the radio um, in Spanish. And so that allowed for, and you know, as you know, baseball season is very long, 162 games. And it just that omnipresent uh, thing where you can just listen to his voice and hear him and hear his insight on the broadcast and it, I think that just allowed that connection to, to last and grow and again we we remember him fondly for how he played and how he pitched but I think there was also just that post playing career uh, connection as well. Yeah, and also, you know, we you talk about the way we see him, the way we remember him, but what about the lesser-known aspects of his personal life that kind of contributed to his legendary greatness? Yeah, I think it's, um, again, speaking strictly for myself, I mean, I would say we all saw something in of us in him. Um, again, you know, my parents being immigrants, you know, he was able to come to this country and achieve phenomenal success. I... You know, it just it was a very relatable persona that he that he that he gave off. And um, I think a lot about how super quick, if I may, just I, I remember as we were, you know, getting ready for this moment, this very sad moment, I was looking at old photos in our LA Times archives and 
and we I noticed that we had sent a photographer to cover his wedding back in 1981 and, and um just looking through those photos you know and I and I mentioned this when I when I got home to my to my aunt and my mother and my mother and my aunt without just without missing a beat was like oh yeah Linda she was a teacher Aww. And, and you know it just but just to have that second nature like as if we were talking about a relative a yeah. cousin and um, was so uh, just resonate so deeply with me and and it made me think that when this moment was gonna come it would it would impact us deeply yeah Angelino uh, thought of him as family uh, Ed Guzman from the LA Times thank you so much for joining us thank you